General, thanks. We've witnessed the Ukrainians turn back ground forces, and now we're seeing them take on, taking on the Russian Navy. Does this strike against the Russian warship change the military calculus in the war, or is it most valuable to the Ukrainians as a propaganda victory and morale booster? No, it, it, Eamon, thank you very much for having me. No, it does change the calculus, absolutely. I mean, you're taking out a Russian flagship. It was, it was co providing command and control to the entire fleet. It was providing air defense for the entire fleet. So tactically, it's tremendously significant. And um, operationally now, it shows how vulnerable their fleet is, the rest of it. And so they're now they're going to have to uh, occupy positions with considerably more st standoff than they did. They might have in the past. They can't get as close to the coastal areas, and they can't provide the kind of indirect fire support and the cruise missile support that they were counting on in this next uh, phase of the battle. And then, of course, strategically, it's hugely important. It sends another m message to the Russians and to the world that the Ukrainians are incredibly talented and resourceful and clever. They're committed to winning this fight, and they've proven they deserve our support. It's stunning to see, but and we're also seeing this huge influx of military firepower from the United States. But is the firepower that the United States is providing here enough for the Ukrainians to sustain this fight going forward? I don't think it's enough. I think we need to do more. Um, you know, I, I just harken back 15 years ago to the days in Iraq. We were spending, we being the United States, $300 million a day in Iraq. Okay, and I submit to you, this is a far more important crisis. Uh, than, than it was over there. I mean, this, this war has an existential threat to our nation, and the war in Iraq wasn't. So, I mean, we spent $3 billion. What is that, about 10 days worth of the war of Iraq? We can do better than that. Now, having said that, though, the weapons that we are seeing over there now, the $800 million package that has the switchblades and the artillery and the radars and the like, they're all uh, in a step in the right direction. What, what um, more would I, you like to see? What more would you like to see? I mean, is it just a matter of volume and dollars being put behind this, or is it different types of weapons? I would see volume. We need more. For instance, we've got, what, 300 switchblades? We need 3,000 switchblades. I mean, that's the, we need, need to increase everything by a magnitude of 5 or 10, because they just more, it, it, you're going to need those kind of technologies and that kind of capability. I mean, the reason that they're winning is because of the will of the people, because of their superior logistics and their superior technology. They've got to maintain that technological edge, so we need to get those stingers and the javelins and more of them and of course the drones and and all the other things that we know that we give, provide them a smaller army up, up against a massive force they're going to need that technological edge that they've been leveraging it this far, far, and we need to continue to empower them to do that. Now, let me ask you about this. The Washington Post is out today with some reporting I want to ask you about. Ukrainian officials are scanning the faces of dead Russian soldiers, identifying them through facial recognition software, and then sending the photos of their bodies back to their mothers in Russia. The software is from a U.S.-based company called Clearview AI. So far, the Post reports there have been 8,600 facial recognition searches conducted, and 582 Russian families have been contacted in this way. As the Post puts it, the Ukrainians championed the use of face-scanning software from the U.S. tech firm Clearview AI as a brutal but effective way to stir up dissent inside Russia, discourage other fighters, and hasten an end to a devastating war. But others point out there's an element of cruelty to this, and it could have exactly the opposite effect. How do you see it? I see it in the latter, um, that this is not a good move on their part. Not okay? a good I'm all for using facial recognition for security and for identifying uh, potential war criminals later on. Oh, that's fine. I mean, you know, but the, the Ukrainians have been able to use this thing right here, this cell phone, okay, to great extent, um, to great advantage. The social media is very important. And I, I know that they're trying to conduct psychological warfare. But look, the Ukrainians already occupy the moral high ground. They don't need to give it up. They don't need to put anything they've achieved thus far mobilizing the world. They need to, don't need to put it at risk by terrorizing Russian mothers with photos of their dead sons. I mean, that's just, a, a, it's, it's taking it way too far. And it's going to have the opposite effects. I mean, we see what, hap what happens to in indiscriminate bombing in, in the Ukraine. It doesn't, you know, it's not uh, bombing them into submission. It's, it's ticking them off. It is, it is stealing their resolve. And they're becoming more enraged at these, this indiscriminate bombing. We, it could have the same effect in Russia. By terrorizing Russian mothers, it could steal their resolve and say, look, we really are fighting a bunch of uh, animals over there, and we need to step up our game, too. So not a good move on their part. It is a brave new world. General, thanks for your insights. Really appreciate it tonight.